All right, you get yourself a network adapter. We're having the Mac Freeboot memory card and you want to put your games on the hard drive. In this video, I will give you a quick tutorial how you need to do it. But don't skip to the part I explain you why, because there are some things that you need to know regarding everything, like the Mac Free booth and also with the hard drive and the network adapter. So stay tuned and let's go. Okay, so in 2021, you have a PlayStation 2 and you want to add yourself a hard drive to it. In this video, I'm just going to explain how you need to do it. It's awesome that you're tuning in and consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family and let's go with the show. You're not going to need one of these memory cards, so we're going to put this one with all my save files, but this one is going to be replaced by the Mac Freeboot to begin with, because we need a soft mod and we're going to need the naughty way to play the game from the hard drive. If you're having a PlayStation 2 Slim, there are some people doing modifications with 2.5 inch drives, but that is not really a plug and play solution, so I will not cover it. So maybe in the future, but not now. If you have a Slim, the only option you're having like is the network and a USB. But again, no possibility putting 3.5 inch drive in it, yeah, if you think about it. No, there is no way. So what do we need? To begin with, you need to have a Mac Free booth. Memory card, you can buy for a couple of dollars or you can just make it yourself from your original memory card. That is something up to you. So the first option is the original Sony network adapter. I don't know how it is with your country and the, what they are offering when it comes to retro game systems, but here the HDD adapter, you can find them, but they are still very expensive. So here I like they have the RJ45 option. This option is most not be found on these, let's say, fake ones. But the downside to this IDA version is very simple. The IDA, the hard drives are very difficult to find in good condition and they are not huge. I think the maximum is 750 gigabytes that I've ever seen. So it's a big downside. You have like the option to replace the PCB and from going from IDA to SATA. But the other option is, of course, we're having a SATA one. Okay, so we're having here the SATA GameStar network adapter. But I already mentioned that this thing doesn't have the RG45 port. So if you want to use the network capabilities, you have no way for doing this. So that's most of the time not an option. But nevertheless, it's a really cheap solution. They can buy it, you can just buy them on AliExpress complete with SATA drive, or maybe you grab yourself an old SATA drive. But there's also a great option. So it depends what kind of adapter are you going to use. But in this video, I wanted to make like a review about the SATA drive or the SATA network adapter. So therefore, I'm going to use this one terabyte and it has a lot of capacity so I can store a lot of games. I think over 100 games of my collection can basically make an ISO file from it and slap it on the hard drive. And it is so convenient in many ways. You can swap them easily like between the files, but the loading times are super fast. But let's show you how you need to do this. Okay, so the only thing that we need is image burner for creating the ISO file. And the other thing is WinHIP, if I'm saying it correctly. This is the program that we're going to need for basically transferring the ISO file from the PC to the hard drive because it's a special partition. Okay, next up. So in the next step, we're going to need a disk drive. You can use an external one of one in your computer. Yeah, I'm a retro gamer and I was having a DVD drive instead of my computer. But let's do this and let's open up the program and I will show you how you need to make an ISO file. All right, so I've entered my game into the disk drive or the DVD drive. Next option that we need to choose is disk to image file. Okay, so let's like, click this option. Now we need to choose the location. Are we going to put the file? In this case, we're going to call it Dead or Alive 2 because basically this is the game Dead or Alive 2. Of course, fill in the name of the game that you're trying to convert into an image file or an ISO. Check it, double check it, the location, and when we're ready to go, press the button, and that's it. Depends on the size, and that is just, and of course the speed that is reading. In combination, this will take up around 15 minutes here, so we're going to skip and cut the video here. Okay, if we have made the ISO file, we're going to get the message that it has been completed. You can also double check this over here, this events there, simply because yeah, if there's an error occurring, you need to double check it there. So, okay, I know for sure that my image file is correct. So that's the first step. I'm having the file over here. Next up, let's choose the program for converting it to my hard drive. But next we need to do is 
getting a hard drive. But you need to take consideration if you want to load up a hard drive on your notebook or computer, you're going to need a docking station. I have a couple of these things laying around, super convenient. And this one is with USB 3.0. Also, when you're getting in faster speed, it's highly possible that you can transfer your games way faster. So take that also in consideration because I have another one. Okay, and the downside with this version I'm having here, this thing has a very old USB connection. So it is very slow for transferring the files, especially when you're having like gigabytes of files. Oh man, it takes forever. But this thing is IDA and SATA compatible. So that's super convenient, but I also have like things like these and USB 3.0 nowadays. But there's also like one of my favorite ones. It's a little bit slow, but it has option to use an EDA drive. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is formatting our disk. So this is something you need to take consideration. So when you're going to format your disk, you need to do a like, so double, triple check, they're going to get the right position. So in my case, I'm having here the C drive, that's my main drive, and this is my local drive that I want to format. Take consideration that can be different with yours. Double check it over here, yep, one terabyte. It says that this isn't a partition, that is correct because we need to format it first. That's what we're going to do now, press format. Oh, and take consideration that I always double check it over here again. Whatever I mentioned, triple check. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like this. All right, so press OK. And give you a couple of warnings. Because yeah, if you're formatting the wrong drive, like maybe in different internal drive, you will have a problem and your drive will be unusable. Okay, yep, and give you a couple of warnings. Okay, and it starts converting your drive, formatting it, so we can use it in your internal it's a compartment of your PlayStation 2. All right, ready to go. That's it. Yep, all right. You can read your text if you're going to get it. But nevertheless, let's press OK. Next thing that we need to do is get our file that we made, like the image file. All right, so let's open up the folder. In this case, the desktop where I have placed the file. Open it. Let's go search for the Data Life 2 image or ISO. Press open. OK. What you need to check out, you can change the name, but I'm going to leave it like this. Check out what kind of format it was. I'm leaving it on DVD. And when everything is set to the position you want, press OK. OK, take consideration depending of the speed of the connection USB and of course the size how long it will take in the end. And if you're having a lot of files, it can take a lot of time. All right, so next up, let's assemble the hard drive into the PlayStation 2 with the SATA adapter and let's configure and play the game. Or better said, let's test it because some of these games will need some configuration. Okie dokie, so the file has been transferred to the drive itself. We're going to grab ourselves the SATA one. That is basically how we're going to do it in the tutorial. We're going to click it in. Be very gentle. Fits very well. I like the way how it fits on the hard drive. You're just going to slide it in like this. And click it in. Alright, and when it's in, we're going to tighten up the two screws over here. Next up, let's tighten up the two screws. Be very gentle with this. All right, let's grab the another one. Okay, so everything is placed and let's boot it up. Oh, and quick point out that we're having now like great options. If you want to play on HDMI, we have the PlayStation 2 to HDMI and we have the PlayStation 1 and 2 to HDMI. The major difference is that basically this thing lose the comp component signal and this one uses the old composite just wanted to i did a full review about this hdmi solution for playstation 2 so if you're interested check out that video but overall cheap options with hdmi and it's pretty cool to have i'm going to use opl i'm a big fan of it the control is not in let's go to opl open ps2 loader that is what we're going to get you can see like the logo over there blinking I can hear the hard drive spinning up and here in the top corner you need to be on the hard drive. Our game has been checked up and you can see we are ready to play. Pressing triangle, you go to the game settings. Check the page of the OPL community. If there are any problems, sometimes you need to do a quick little bit of modification like putting the mode on on and off. Some minor adjustments for basically skipping some parts or booting up. 
So when like a game freezes or having issue with the intro, you can basically skip it. But there are things you need to configure, not with every game, because this game boots up without a hassle. Okay, so let's boot up the game. Press cause again. And we are ready to go. Sometimes it will do this. And your game has been set up. And now you can play your disc games, made an ISO from it and play them from a hard drive. Super easy. And I love it. One of the reasons I like it, so basically I can just save my games, don't scratch them up, or better said, preserving them. And another very big positive thing, with the internal hard drive, faster loading times. Look at this. It's just superb over a disk and USB. Okay guys, so this is what you need to do for basically adding the games to your internal hard drive. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell. If you have any questions or if you want to see different tutorials, always leave it in the comments so I can check out if I can make them for you. It would be great to have you in the Wicked family. Hit the little bell and I will see you in the next video.